All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from a kind of a bit of a windy, bit of wet and windy San Diego. And uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by Suhei Piedra, who is up in probably an equally wet and windy L.A. Yes, it's uh, not windy, but it is rainy. It's cloudy, which is not typical for us, right, John? <laughs> no, not typical at all. No, because normally, you know, we want to be the ones boasting that we're wandering on the beach in December while people in the rest of the world are <laughs> the rest of the country and the rest of the world are shivering. Um, so um, Suhei is a 20 plus year certified tax preparer and make, likes to make her client money work for them so they don't have to work forever. She's co-founder of Prominence Business and Wealth Management, supports high earning service based business owners achieve long term wealth. Uh, through a holistic approach to financial services, providing bookkeeping, tax preparation, financial planning, and, and tax strategy. You also host and produce Tax Talk with the Hey Hey podcast, uh, which provides insights into business taxes, wealth building, and what it means to really create financial freedom. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is the number one way business owners can gain more capital and passive income in their business. So, um, Suhei, like get, getting into it, getting uh, into it immediately. Yeah. You know, especially with you know entrepreneurs and small business, like uh, capital is always, especially when the businesses are early stage or maybe yes. they're going, capital is always that massive challenge. And and oftentimes we underestimate the amount of capital we'll need to keep the business going because let's face it, you know, you have that age old thing. I may be bringing in revenue, but my but there's no money in my bank because people aren't paying me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, no, it's uh, it's very difficult, right, in the beginning uh, to figure out ways to create uh, to find that capital. Uh, but it's definitely out there. It's out there through um, all sorts of, you know, whether it's an SBA loan or grants or, you know, even sometimes our cities offer uh, assistance. Uh, but what happens is the first thing that people get stumped on is when you apply for any of those, whether it's a loan or a grant, the first thing they want is your financials. They want to look mm -hmm. at, you know, your profit and loss statement, your balance sheet. They want to look to, uh, you know, your business plan. And that's where a lot of us get intimidated and we fail, right? Because we don't have that stuff in order. We're out there building our widgets or selling what we're mm -hmm. selling, being the professionals that we know to be. But we forget about the back, uh, the backup office, which is so critical and so important uh, to get that in order so that we can continue to move forward and find these fundings, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we offer is we, we offer a very holistic approach to the business and sit down and figure out what are the goals? What are we trying to achieve here? And uh, figure out ways that, you know, we can build that capital. Or if you already have a successful business and we're just trying to clean up and pay less in taxes, make sure that we don't hurt your purchasing power mm -hmm while we're still trying to save taxes. Yeah. And a lot of individuals don't understand that it all goes hand in hand. So Right. And and um uh, you know today currently obviously we're we're in another one of these market corrections right now and obviously with interest rates going up and you know the tightening of uh, uh, capital markets etc uh it's very easy for people to get uh disheartened that there's you know especially if you're a smaller business or whatever that there's no capital available to you out there but uh what are some of the ways i mean you mentioned like sbas and city law and things what are some other creative ways you can look for capital so i mean yes we're gonna there's always going to be what I call, you know, well, they're, they're called industry cycles, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there's ups and, th and there's downs. Uh, what we like to assist with and, you know, teach clients is let's carry a, a very more stable kind of a business where, yes, on our up years, we can use that revenue to help support us on those right. down years. Mm -hmm. But we maintain a steady business cycle. And so, uh, but again, it, I think it comes down to, you know, um, educating our clients and, and telling them, yes, even though the world is going crazy around us, we still can control what happens around us specifically, mm -hmm. you know? And so with some of the business owners that I have, uh, when we start to really look at the projection of five years, 10 years, 15 years mm -hmm. down the line, whether it's early retirement 
or uh, maybe acquiring, you know, their first office building or something like that. We look at the numbers and see what they're telling us about them, about the business. Is this doable? How soon can it be done? And then turn around and figure out ways that we can start investing in assets that will continue to feed and, you know, grow money for us. And it's not just us working for money, but money working for us as well. Right. So that's it. So that's it. That's really interesting because often at times, as you, uh, as you know better than I, you know, people running the business, it's all about, yeah, let me get working capital into the business. And But what you're saying is also is look for opportunities to make investment in assets that can provide you with, with uh, you know, passive income passive. Or, or capital or whatever. Um, so what are some of the ways you can do that? Because uh, like I said, oftentimes we're just so fixated on the working capital that we don't think that there are other things we could be doing to stabilize the business. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit. It just, again, we want to make sure everything lines up with what are your goals, right? Yes. And so um, I belong to a lot of groups that that's all our focus is figuring out ways that uh, we can introduce to our clients, you know, new cool ways to generate cash flow, whether mm -hmm. it's through, you know, like an RV or a rental property out of state. We're used mm -hmm. to, especially here in California, we're used to thinking that a rental property will cost us so much money that it's, you know, it's so difficult to get into. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, I was telling you earlier, I was in Ohio this last weekend because I have a couple properties in Ohio and they cost $70,000. And so there's a life out there that um, it takes, you know, less than $20,000 to invest into a property that starts to cash flow from day one. So, Again, it's just opening up to the opportunity that there's other things out there that we're just not aware of because no one really talks about them or you find it difficult to be like, well, who am I going to ask or, you know, who's going to take me there? And so what we try to do is build those networks and those teams so that we have the handholding process that clients sometimes need in order to get going on all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's a, it's a, and one of the things actually by doing this podcast, I've I've spoken to you know many people on different types of uh, passive income, but it's it is amazing like the opportunities that are out there. Yeah. I mean, as you said, you know, rental properties. You don't even need to buy a rental property; you can buy into you know a fractional, uh -huh. uh, you know, fraction, fractional yeah, yeah. ownership, um, storage units. There's so many you know warehouse space. There's so many different things that you can you can do. Um, but every but most people get fixated and think, oh well, you know, investing that's the stock market, and they don't yeah. realize that there are all these other things that are that can be counter cyclical. You know, they can help uh, iron out things during tough times. But but most of all, they're they're very creative and steady ways of getting yes. some income. And I believe in th there needs to be a mixture of things, yes. right? Because again, when there's inter industry cycles, some things can go down and some things mm -hmm. can go up, and you know they vice versa. So you never know what to invest in to have this, um, the secure investment like that. There's, I don't think there's something that exists like that. I, I believe everything yeah. has a risk. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sure. but you want to mitigate your risk by getting something that's opposite to it. Right. And so, um, you know, I love the stock market. There's nothing wrong with it, but when we put all our money just into say a 401k or into the invest market, we're still investing the same kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. The same type of asset. And so what we try to expose to clients is like, look, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can start to um, invest in that will allow you to create uh, a little bit of extra cash flow. The majority of us don't need that extra cash flow right now because we're still working or we're still, we still have our business. So then I teach them that now that extra cash flow can go into some sort of other, mm -hmm. whether it's an insurance, you know, are you a whole life or, you know, um, mm -hmm. investment account. And now money is growing for you. Not only is your asset growing with you or appreciating, um, now that cash flow is creating another pool of money that you can access if you if something happens, right? Um, and so that's what we want clients to see is the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do taxes, and I think taxes are the least utilized tool out there because our society has taught us we don't want to pay taxes; we want to pay the least amount possible. <laughs> but what we do is we hurt our purchasing power. And so when we hurt our purchasing power, we continue to be, I mean, I don't want to say poor, but without assets, right? Because you need to show good financials to acquire those assets. So mm -hmm. it's like a little cycle, right? You you hurt yourself here, which ends up hurting here, which ends up hurting there. And so before you know it, you're just in this rat race and you can't get out of it. 
Yeah, yeah, no, obviously with the with the you know short term thinking, and um, and one of the one of the other things too, it was always just interests me like that. The greatest the greatest threat to homes in the U.S. right is the houses being destroyed. It's not fire. It's not wind. It's not flooding. It's termites, right? <laughs> and the thing, no, seriously. And the thing is, like termites, they mm -hmm. come in. They can be there for years and years, and you don't notice it until the whole house falls down. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing in businesses when you have when you are not on top of some of the leakage in your expenses or how you're spending your money or how your or your maybe your collections aren't that good. But there's lots of ways you can have these kind of almost like termites, like hidden. Yeah killers in your business if you're not on top of them. That is true. And um, I, again, it goes back to, you know, us trying to break this, this cycle where in the society that we're in, where we're afraid to look at our numbers, we're mm -hmm. the majority of us are afraid to look at our finances, right? But they're telling a story. And if you can catch that, even if it's saying you're going to go bankrupt, that's <laughs> fine, but I'm not there yet. So what can yeah. I do today to prevent that? You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of the times it would have just taken us to sit down a professional or you know you and your spouse it doesn't really matter but really look at those numbers and compare them to what they did the month before mm -hmm. and they're telling you something they're telling you either sales went up or sales went down yeah. and are we going to continue to do what we're doing so they continue to rise or are we going to stop doing what we're doing because they're they're declining you know and and those are the kind of things that you want to look at same thing with the expenses is where is the money really going mm -hmm. and a lot of the times when we sit down and we do these comparisons people are amazed at how much money's going out right and yeah. so and i'm like look i i'm not about saying oh cut your expenses i want you to make more money and still continue the lifestyle that you have but let's look and evaluate. And one of the big ones is, for example, our marketing, right? Mm -hmm. our marketing is expensive and I love it because to me, it's an investment, not an expense, right? But you want to see a return on that investment. And that's the part that clients don't realize is like, okay, you're paying Yelp or Google or whoever, you know, tons of money every single month. What are you getting back? Yeah. And they're like, oh, I didn't realize I haven't gotten you know, no referrals. Well, why? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so why do you keep feeding something that's not returning on that investment? And so that's where I come in. I'm like, let's evaluate. Let's really put logic behind these numbers. And it could be anything, right? It is sometimes yeah. it's staff. They're like, I want to hire somebody, but I don't know if I can afford it. Well, let's look, let's see what these numbers are trying to tell us. And we have to remove that fear because if we can look at them and use them to our benefit, we turn around the business, we turn on ourselves and it, everything just looks better because we're driving at that point. We're not just blinded by, you know, driving yeah. with the blindfold. Yeah. And it's funny, it's because, um, you know, nowadays it's, you know, it's much easier to obviously start and get a business up and running because you can leverage all of these online services and stuff. The downside of it is you can leverage all of these online services and it can end up like your, uh, like your t you know your streaming service subscriptions where you're suddenly like you've uh, you you've subscribed to all these services and you've lost track of them you don't even know which ones you're using why you're using yeah. them there's money going out uh, and so I, I i do think uh, i i always think that yeah you don't have to become obsessed on the expense side but be but you know keeping a really really sharp eye on it is is so so important it is very important and what i tell clients is let's look at what the overhead is because we at least mm -hmm. want to be making enough to cover that yeah. overhead and then the next part is like okay well and the, your overhead should include your, your pay as well you you yeah. have to invest time in your business therefore that mm -hmm. should be included right and a lot of people fail to do that and wonder why they're in such high debt or wonder why they can't make ends meet and i'm like well you didn't even account for the fact that you need to pay yourself you know uh and, and it's so critical mm -hmm. to to make sure that you're paying yourself that your business makes enough to pay for you and your family um, but looking at those things and, and figuring out, okay, well, if I have extra money now, now what do I do with it? And mm -hmm. in the beginning, when we first started our business, everything was going back into marketing, you know, sure. but we wanted to see a return because if I was throwing the little bit of money I had left, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make sure I was getting a little bit more back at the next month and so wow. on. Uh, but we get to evaluate with clients and figure out, okay, what is it that they really want? You know, because at the end of the day, um, you know, when you look at those numbers, and you see, even if, like I said, even if it's not something that you wanted to that you expected and you're not doing as well as you thought, you can still catch it early enough. Mm -hmm. My whole thing is 
with you mentioned all these online, you know, stuff, TikTok's becoming so popular, There's so many vendors and, you know, they're making money and all of this stuff. But I'm like, I don't want them to be gone overnight, which yeah. is typically what happens when you get an influx of business and then you spend the money instead of doing an, inv an investing in back into your business, whether it's creating a real structure of uh, employees and, um, you know, uh, you know, the actual business itself. And, and then before you know it overnight, it's gone. And so yes. you're like, I didn't even do any. I made that much money and I didn't do anything with it. And I'm like. Yeah, that typically is what happens. And so um, I love seeing the success that I do see when uh, when, you know, I'm on uh, you know social media. But in the back of my mind, I'm just like, I wish that they are taking care of their finances and yeah. that they are going to be here to to last a long time. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, uh, absolutely. Because let's face it, I mean, that is that is the toughest things with a lot of uh, a lot of small business, particularly if you're in a service business or uh is that uh, you know you get you 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 get some clients, and then you get so wrapped up in servicing the mm -hmm. clients that you're not building you know pipelines. So then you're always in these peaks and valleys. Like you know you're yeah. you have some clients, you're making some money, you're doing all this work, and then suddenly you have no money because now you got to go find new clients because you've just finished that. And I think that 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 peaks and valley, that lumpiness, that that's that's one of the biggest killers too. It, it really is. And we have to take the time to work on our business, not just in it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when uh, when I first get clients, one of the first books I tell them to read is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Right. Right. And it's not it, they're like, well, that's a real estate book. It does not. It What it's ta yeah. talking about is not necessarily just the real estate. It's talking about the assets. Right. And it's talking about really learning how to graduate from being, you know, that self-employed individual that, you know, you're become a slave to your own business mm -hmm. um, and, and transition over to being a real business owner and then to becoming that investor. It does take uh, a little bit of education on our part to figure out how to make that transition over. Um, a lot of people sometimes stumble upon it, but that's sometimes when they struggle or they don't even know, um, you know, how it's all happening. But if you if you can control it and drive it and really do it with intention, I mean, the success would be either quicker or much greater. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but when you talk about cycles, that's another thing is uh, when we you know, when I talk about having some profits and investing it back into your marketing, we want that wheel that, you know, our business cycle to continue to run yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. When we're busy, we still need to do marketing so that it catches on, you know, when we're slow and so on. Um, because usually that's what happens. You get busy, you forget to do your marketing. You don't, you know, you're so busy in your yep. business that you don't do anything. And then when you become slow, you're like, oh, I need to market again. Well, yep. there's a delay. There's a mm -hmm. little bit of a delay and it's not about, uh, you know, I don't have the time to do it. It's okay. Find somebody that, that specializes yeah. in that. Cause that's mm -hmm. the other thing is as self-employed individuals. Um, yeah, we can do anything. I'll, uh, you know, I can tell you right now that if you tell me and teach me how to do something, I can do it and I will do, mm -hmm. you know, do it great. The problem is it doesn't mean I have to do it. It doesn't mean yes. I should be doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if my focus is my tax business, then even if I could figure out marketing, that's not what I should be doing. My time is better used and valued in the tax strategy side than it is trying to figure out how to use Canva or whatever, you know? For sure. But as self-employed individuals, we wear so many multiple hats and we forget that at some point we have to start handing them over to professionals that can actually take over and and, and create more value there than we yeah. have. And and the beautiful thing is nowadays is that is that the uh, the barriers to that are, are have been lowered so much now you can go on Upwork today and find somebody to do your email marketing for you to do your social media manager whatever it is you need yeah. you can find them and you and you can find extremely you know talented and qualified people all over the globe to fit your budget etc um, so that's the beauty of it you're right is is yes. you don't need to do everything yourself. And now it's more affordable than ever and more accessible than ever for you to be able to outsource some of your non-core. 
It's yeah, not um, about how to do it. It's who can do it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I just think the other thing too, because I think as we come towards the end of the year, you know, a lot of people start to reflect on their on their lives and circumstances. And more and more we're hearing about, you know, people are thinking more and more about going out on their own or being yeah. contractors or living where they want, all of that kind of stuff. So I think one of the key messages, uh, what you opened up with is that whole idea is that, before you do it, like figure out what it is you want. Just don't go like, I just want to be my own boss and start my own business, right? You need to go a little bit further than that, really, because that won't carry you through. Right. And it, and not that it won't, right? It will. No. It's, it's a harder road, obviously. Yeah. 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 But that way, really, as you said, really like figuring out what it is, is that you want and what you want out of the business and how you yes. want the business. And don't to... get caught up in all the research either. Right. Yeah. We have so many people that know so much stuff and they've gone to every conference out in the world and educated yes. themselves on every webinar, but they still haven't taken the action step. Right. So don't paralyze yourself there either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's the other part, too, is that sometimes when people like get the idea and they want to do something and then they look at their goal and they think, wow, that's just so far away that you have to sort of go, yes, there's my goal. But you know what? It starts with putting one foot in front of the other. So um, very that's, true. let's just start. Well, listen, Sue, hey, this has been fantastic. Thank you for such great insights. All of Sue Hay's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what your business does. Yes, thank you. So I'm co-owner of Prominence Business. It's located here in Glendora, California, but we are na nationwide. And we focus on doing a very holistic approach to tax planning, tax preparation. We want you to really look at those numbers, understand them and leverage them most of all. Um, and if it takes that handholding process, then that's what we're here for. Uh, we love what we do. We love helping clients just see the bigger picture and uncovered you know all those little golden nuggets out there that are waiting for us so yeah fantastic well listen i'm always a big big recommend always recommend you go find experts like suhey it's a cut you it can save you a lot of time and energy get you set up in the right way get you focused on the right things and for me like focus is is always a huge part of, of success the more focused you can be the better so i would encourage you go check out uh, suhey services and go go get an expert like suhey to help you and uh, good luck if you're starting a business in 2024 best of luck to you Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thanks again, Sue. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon.